السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يقتل مؤمنا متعمدا فجزاؤه جهنم خالدا فيها غضب الله عليه ولعنه وأعد له عذابا عظيما In Surah An-Nisa, verse number 93, we are reminded of this important verse. وَمَنْ يَقَتُ الْمُؤْمِنَ مُتَعَمِّدًا Whoever kills a mu'min, a believer, intentionally, look at what will be his punishment. وَمَنْ يَقَتُ الْمُؤْمِنَ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمْ His jaza, his punishment will be jahannam. And not only that, Khalidan fiha to remain there forever. Wa ghadib Allahu alayhi and Allah's anger upon him. Wa la'anahu Allah would curse him. Wa a'adda lahum azaban azima and for him prepared a very severe punishment. When you think about the consequence of taking the life of the believer away. And how many a people, how many a zalimin, how many a tyrants, how many believers have been killed? You can well imagine the plight of the condition of a people when there is facade, when there is mischief, when there is bloodshed. And on the other hand, again, we see that Almighty Allah Ta'ala also reminds us in Surah Ma'ida. Ponder over this verse, a time to reflect on this verse min ajli dhalik katabna ala bani israel annahu man katala nafsan bi ghayri nafsin aw fasadin fil ardi fa ka'annama katala an-nasa jami'a wa man ahyaha fa ka'annama ahya an-nasa jami'a surah ma'ida verse number 32 so it is for that reason that we have written also on the bani israel and ordained upon them that whomsoever takes the life of any nafs, a life is taken away, nafs, remember, بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ Now when a life is taken away, you know we say, facade, creating corruption, mischief in the land, that nafs, no person has the right to take any life away. Remember how Allah has kept life as very sacred, it is sanctified, it is, belongs to Almighty Allah Ta'ala. No person has the right to take the life of any person away. Yes, there is discussion about what happens when somebody himself had committed a murder and what does Islam say about Qisas? What is Islamic ruling when a murder has been created? So that is a separate discussion. But here we are speaking about those lives that have been taken away. Whether it is a Muslim or not a Muslim, a believer, not a believer, it does not matter when it comes to life then this is how serious the matter is. One life taken away, فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا It is likened to have killed all of humanity. وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا And whomsoever saves a life, what is it likened to? فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا It is as if though he has saved the life of all of humanity. This is what our deen teaches us. So it is not, you know, we say wherever there is a killing, yes indeed, there have been, millions have been killed, millions have died, innocent people suffer in so many of the lands. We have seen it in so many countries, how many people have been killed. Look at, you know, we, we always speak about like what has happened in Kashmir, what is happening in Yemen, what has happened in Sham, in Syria, how many have been killed there in Palestine, in all those places there has been killings. 
And now when we see how it has been looked and portrayed in the media when there is killing in Ukraine, we say that yes indeed we are and we should not be pleased when we see so many innocent people who are suffering, who have been killed and who are dying. This is how Almighty Allah Ta'ala reminds us that a soul does not matter, it is a nafs. Wherever it may be, whomsoever takes that life away, and yes, at the same time, we have seen what's happening with so many a believers, mu'min, believers that have been killed. Now you can well imagine what will be the consequence of those who kill the believer intentionally. What will be his punishment? فَجَزَاؤُهُ Jahannam. Do we not read the Qur'an? Do we not have that fear that a day will come where those zalimin, their eyes will be made to stare in horror? Do we not see how many a believers also have been killed in so many parts of the world intentionally? And when that is the consequence for taking the life of the believer in the fire of hell forever. Allah's anger upon them and for them is a very severe punishment. When are we going to take and take heed? We all are on a journey and part of our responsibility is to safeguard and protect and see what is our responsibility and role towards fellow humankind as Allah has honored the children of Adam. And then when we think about when Almighty Allah Ta'ala informs the Malaika and the angels, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً قَالُوا أَتَجَعَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكُ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكُ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And that is the reality that this corruption and the killing and the facade and the mischief Almighty Allah Ta'ala, He had the knowledge and He knows how man is going to behave. He informed the Malaika that I am placing on this earth those that will be the representative but then what did the angels and the malaika and remember angels they never disobey Allah لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم and they are and they do as they have been commanded to do so they said to Almighty Allah Ta'ala أَتَّجْعَلُ فِيهَا you are going to place therein those that is going to create mischief in the land may yes we could dima and spill the blood and we are praising you we are extolling you we are glorifying you Allah Ta'ala says, إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know that which you do not know. So it does not matter even when we go into the pages of history and people have seen and have not learned. If you look in our times, World War I and World War II, how many millions have been killed. And here again, it was only 25 years ago about, think about those Muslims that were killed, I visited Bosnia, I've been to Sarajevo, I've witnessed and I've been to the memorial ground there in Srebrenica. And uh, you know, the people living there, they could never have, they could not imagine that a time will come, the day will come under attack. These are European, these are Bosnians, these are you know, when we speak about what's been portrayed in the media, how people are looking differently at a person who is Asian or is brown or is black. Forget about that. We are looking at a people 25 years ago in Bosnia, Herzegovina. How many were killed? Only reason they came under attack is because they had Iman or they were Muslim or they had belief. So therefore understand that we are living at a time, despite our advancement in, you know, we speak about civilization, yet indeed this is the nature of man. 
man who will never change. So, inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know that which you do not know. Almighty Allah Ta'ala knows the nature of man. When there is so much attachment to the dunya and there is, you know, materialism, when a people, uh, it is all about the greed and the hunger for power and to have power in the land, this is how and this is the nature of man. And here it is, we are witnessing in our lifetime and there is a great fear and worry and concern a people have that there has been wars in the past. Man has not taken lesson from history. People are being killed. People are dying. It has been in places when a people had enjoyed that amen and that peace and that security. And a people could never imagine that a time will come that they will need to or they will have to evacuate or they may become refugees. It's happened so many a times. And now when it's coming so close to the home, now when it's in Europe and now when a people are worried and concerned and looking at what's happening right here in front of our eyes, a people now have to evacuate and become refugees again. The question is, how do we show our respect to humanity? How do we respond in times of difficulty, in pain and hardship? So on the one hand, we may speak about the month of Ramadan is fast approaching. We may speak about Laylatun Nisfim in Sha'ban. And at the same time, we are and we are thinking and we are reflecting and pondering how is it that when a people came under attack, when a people had witnessed and seen buildings crumble upon themselves and their families, the world moved. Time has moved, people have forgotten we were in the time of the pandemic. What happened in the time when a people were being bombed there in Gaza? We have forgotten about the many of those innocent and those children and those mothers that have been crying and how many families were lost during the time when there was bombardment. How many people in the land of Sham? What has happened in the land of Iraq? Why is there so much of double standards when it comes to the, you know, even with journalism and how it has been portrayed in the media? When on the one hand, a people, they go and they want to help and support Ukraine, they have been referred to as heroes. Therefore, understand the challenges that we are facing. The believer is always going to go to a test and a trial. أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَيُّتْرَكُوا أَيَّكُولُ آمَنَّا وَمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ does man feel that the moment he has iman that he will be left alone? Yes, indeed, from amongst a people, you will have those who are truthful, those who are liars. And the nature of men, you will have those who are from the munafiqeen and those who are the hypocrites. So let's for a moment think, if we, yes, we are, and we are hoping that Almighty Allah Ta'ala allow us to live to see the blessed month of Ramadan. But when the Ramadan sets in, if we have not even sorted out many matters between ourselves, our families, you know, we have brothers who are also still disputing. How many have passed away and left the dunya? And yet there is still the dispute when it comes to matters of inheritance and people are still fighting and about the distribution of wealth. When other parts of the world people are running and evacuating and uh, it's all about survival and they have left their properties and their belongings. You've seen it for yourself how a people when the time comes and when there is desperation and there is the clinging naturally to life how a people will abandon and leave everything only for survival. So yes, indeed, we are reminded that when a people come under this great test and trial, then on the other hand, as believers, we are also being tested. How do we respond? How do we ourselves will try to remove the difficulty of the believer in this dunya? So that on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Allah will remove our difficulty. So our living in this world, yes indeed, 
we have to worship Almighty Allah Ta'ala just like how we have to ensure that we uh, hold on to the Kitabullah, like how we have to hold on to our deen, our prayers, our ibadah, of worshiping Almighty Allah Ta'ala. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا As we are reminded that Almighty Allah Ta'ala, He has ordained that you worship Him. You do not worship anybody else and you be kind to your parents. So the month of Ramadan is fast approaching. Let's be from amongst those people who when Almighty Allah Ta'ala looks at His creation and He forgives all of His creation when He excludes the dead who is the mushrik and those who are the mushahin think, understand, what is this mushahin? And ask ourselves that question. If we have wronged any person, if we have usurped the rights of any person, if we have abused and, uh, you know, the, uh, our fellow Muslim brother, then we have an important duty to try and amend and to try and reconcile well before the blessed month of Ramadan because ultimately our goal is that when we enter the month of Ramadan, we be from amongst those people whom Almighty Allah Ta'ala, yes, Entering it with tawbah and repentance and istighfar, but at the same time, the doors of Jannah will be open, doors of Jahannam will be closed when the month of Ramadan sets in. So don't just enter the month of Ramadan and thinking that we are going to worship Almighty Allah Ta'ala, but then we have forgotten that 15th Layla to Nisfim in Sha'ban is that opportunity well before that to try and uh, sort matters out with our family members. May Almighty Allah Ta'ala give us the understanding, the tawfiq and the realization of what it means to prepare for the blessed month of Ramadan. Until my next reflection, Jazakumullah Khairan, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu.